Hi, welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses at Centro Equestre La Luz. And today we're going on with another episode of Classical Principles of the Art of Training Horses with Master Nuno Oliveira. This is actually volume one. I've got another one of these. <laughs> so we might even be going on with more. So today um, the chapter is about the relaxation of the hand and leg. It's actually written in French, but I don't want to offend French people by using my terrible French. De son, du main et de jambe. <laughs> Sorry, French people. French speakers. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, it's a very short one, so I'm just going to write it. Write it? Write it? <laughs> Read it! Because every word is gold, really. So, the rider must always have in his head that to train a dressage horse is to push, take and give. To push by gentle action of the rider's back and buttocks. To take is the closing of the fingers with a still hand, the result of the arm suitably placed and the elbow near the body and the flexion of the waist and the position of the chest with all of this relaxed. So it's, you know, the upper body, the torso and the arm, shoulder, elbow, everything that the, um, gives the stability and possible potential intelligence to the use of the hands. And to give, so to push, to take, to give, to give. When the fingers open and give, the contact is softer. The horse remains in the vibration of the exercise and his attitude does not alter. One can leave him to do a few movements on relaxed reins and without any action of the legs, only supported by the released movement of the torso which has a relaxed waist. Sorry, relaxed movement of the torso, I'm thinking released movement of the torso. So that's about <laughs> putting the horse into whatever movement you're doing and then just be following that with your body and that's what keeps the horse in the movement without constant reminders from the hands and legs. So when one knows how to take without surprising the horse, the longer one can descend du mat, <laughs> let go with the hands. <laughs> While the horse remains in balance himself, the greater is the proof of impulsion. So it's that thing about being able to just let him do his own thing without constant reminders, and then we know we really have impulsion, you know? If you have to keep a hold of your horse and keep pushing your horse every step of the way, then the impulsion's just not there. The impulsion one can define in many ways, but I think the one that suits the training of horses is that the horse remains for as long as possible in the same attitude of cadence and rhythm and displays or always shows the same amount of energy without being assisted and reminded by the aids of the rider. The relaxing of the legs and the hands of the rider is the proof of the real collection and collection is the poetry of impulsion. That's a beautiful line, isn't it? Relaxation of the legs and the hands of the rider is the proof of the real collection. And the collection is the poetry of the impulsion. So, no impulsion, no poetry, no collection. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope that was useful or you enjoyed listening to me today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Keep tuning into the light and have a great day.